Good morning and welcome to Kid News. I'm Tori. Today is Thursday, May 6, 2021. And we begin with an unusual heads up from the Pentagon. The U.S. Space Command is tracking the path of a massive piece of space junk that's expected to re-enter Earth's atmosphere, possibly this Saturday or Sunday. It came off a Chinese spacecraft that blasted off last week, towing the first section of China's new space station. Now the rocket's main stage is headed back down. Normally, engineers pick a place, like the ocean, for space debris to land, but this huge piece is orbiting unpredictably. While it may sound unsettling, Harvard astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell says don't lose a second of sleep over it. He told CNN that most of it will burn up on re-entry, and the risk of the rest doing any actual damage ranges from pretty small to incredibly tiny. Those tracking the rocket's path at the 18th Space Control Squadron say they won't know its exact re-entry point until a few hours in advance, but expect it to arrive this weekend. If you want to keep tabs on it, we've put a link on our website. In other space news, a million-dollar question. How much would someone pay for a bottle of wine that spent 14 months aboard the International Space Station? A London auction house is betting that some wine buff, or maybe space buff, will spend a million dollars to own a pricey piece of cosmic history. Why the steep price tag? First, the fancy French red wine in question, one of a dozen bottles that rocketed to the stars, already sells here on Earth for $10,000. Second, it comes with a custom Star Trek-inspired case, a corkscrew made from a meteorite, and a bottle of the same vintage that remained earthbound, so wine lovers can compare the two. And the money goes to a good cause, helping fund future space missions, as well as studying the galaxy's effect on food and agriculture. There's some happy baby news to report for a species previously on the brink of extinction. Rangers at Pinnacles National Park in Northern California have announced the arrival of a baby California condor. Since the nestling arrived on April 12th, videos show the parents taking turns caring for their little chick, one doing the feeding while the other stands guard. After about five more months of this daily routine, flying lessons are on the calendar. After that, the bird will learn how to find food on its own and hopefully hang out with other condors. Conservationists estimate there are now more than 300 condors across California, Arizona, Utah, and Mexico. The East Coast of the U.S. is on the brink of what some are calling the gross-out event of the decade. Any day now, trillions of insects known as brood X cicadas will emerge from their 17-year underground slumber. Entomologists at the University of Maryland have already uncovered droves of the red-eyed black buggers while digging around in a suburban backyard, and mass sightings are being reported in Tennessee and North Carolina. Scientists say when they surface in as many as 15 states, it'll most likely be at dusk, after which they'll make a mad and very loud scramble up the closest tree or vertical surface. Then they'll shed their skins and eventually develop wings. In a matter of weeks, the whole thing will be over, only to happen again in another 17 years. The United States is the only country in the world where these types of periodic cicada events take place. An eight-month-old kitten named Marlin is catching waves and stares on the outer banks in North Carolina. Unlike most cats who avoid water at all costs, this adventurous orange tabby seeks it out. Most days, he's at the beach, either splashing around the ocean with his three dog siblings or riding the surf in a tiny white clam boat. His owners trace Marlin's love of water back to when he fell into a canal at five and a half weeks old. Instead of freaking out, he simply started swimming. As to why cats in general don't like getting wet, animal experts have a couple theories. One, water weighs down fur, which makes it harder for fastidious felines to self-groom. Another widely held belief is that because cats evolved in dry climates, enjoying water just isn't part of their DNA. That's it for Kid News. Now, our Kid News Quiz. When is the big piece of space junk likely to re-enter Earth's atmosphere? This weekend. 
What type of bird recently hatched at Pinnacles National Park? A California condor chick, which used to be on the brink of extinction. How much time did a bottle of soon-to-be auction wine spend on the space station? Fourteen months. What makes Marlin different from most other cats? He loves to spend time in the water. In One for the Road. Feeling cooped up after this past year, seven-year-old Nicholas of Phoenix, Arizona knows just how you feel and found an answer to it. Encouraged by his mom to beat pandemic boredom, the travel enthusiast created a do-it-yourself craft airplane kit to give other kids something to do and help them dream about post-COVID adventures. So far, the project's really taken off. The kits start at $13 each, and he's already sold over 1,000 of them, with $1 from each purchase going to a charity that provides books for children's hospitals. We hope everyone listening is showing their teachers some extra love this week. Our special shout-out today is from Yuva to Mrs. Salafia at the Stamford Charter School of Excellence in Stamford, Connecticut. Yuva wants to thank Mrs. Salafia for a wonderful year, and his family sends gratitude for the great education you gave him and the entire class. They wish you a heartfelt Teacher Appreciation Day and week. Thanks for listening, everyone. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll see you back here for more Kid News tomorrow morning.